Hi class, I thought I would uh, do a video on how I create a, a wall and a texture wall. So the way I build a wall is a lot of people build it from boxes and stuff. And it's not the, like sometimes I don't do that, but normally I build it from a rectangle. So I build from splines. So we're going to start off here with a rectangle and let's set our size in here. So let's say that maybe this is about... I don't know, maybe about a 20 foot uh, wall by say, oh, let's go 10 feet. So 10 feet, and then I'm just going to drop it down and then slide it up. And so it's sitting on the ground right there. Okay, so it's 10 foot tall, 20 feet long. Uh, Let's make it a little bit longer. Let's go 22 feet. Okay. Uh, I'm going to cut some windows in here. So to do that, I'm going to make some little rectangles uh, for our window. And so we'll say a little window like that. I'm going to clone this over. I'm just holding down my shift key as I drag it over. I want it to be copy. And then we're going to do the same thing again. And uh that up a little bit maybe say about like that and then I'm going to draw another rectangle right around that to be my frame for my window and uh, it's just going to do this don't be perfect that's pretty good okay and then let's say uh, I'm going to have uh, a couple of windows in here so we'll have another one over here now, because I'm doing this uh, as a spline, then I'm going to want to double uh, these here. I need two of these, so I'm just going to clone those. Okay, this is copies. And then grab this, and then I'm going to hide those inside pieces. Okay, so now I can take this piece, uh, go ahead and convert this to a spline, and then I can attach these pieces to it. Okay, and then pull that in and I can put an extrude onto that to actually give me some thickness to my wall. So we'll just do an extrude and uh, we're going to do it four inches. Okay, so it's a four inch wall. Okay, now I'm going to unhide uh, the other, and I'm just going to hide this for a second. And so now I'm going to do the same thing here, convert this to an edible uh, spline, and then I can attach multiple to bring it up to attach by list. And then all I have to do is pick all of these, attach them all together, and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put an extrude on this. Now, the nice thing about an extrude is it keeps the last setting. Now, I'm going to want uh, the windows to be a little bit thicker because I'm going to go for six inches on that and unhide everything. Now I'm going to go to the top view and I want to slide these windows back so that they're centered on the wall like so. Okay, so now I have a nice little wall. Let's go ahead and pick everything and uh, we'll just put us a uh, Arch and design shader on these. Turn down some of the reflection on the arch and design. Don't get it all that reflective for right now. And so now I've got my wall. Okay. All right. So let's start texturing on this. So I'm just going to hide those windows right now. Okay. So on my shader, uh, I'm going to copy this one, and this will be my wall shader. So this is wall, and I also want to name my wall over here, so I'm just going to call this Wally. Wally! Okay. All right, so I'm going to make this uh, like a brick wall. So we're going to come in here in my diffuse, and uh, I'm going to load in a bitmap. And I'm just going to use some of the uh, standard bitmaps that come with uh, Max. Let's just use this uh, brick here. Uh, that'll work fine. And uh, nice, these come with a bot map. So I'll go ahead and drop that in there. 
And so we can apply this to our wall and then we'll turn it on where we can see it in the viewport. Okay. <laughs> okay, now we really can't see the pattern because this really doesn't have uh, mapping coordinates on it. So we got to put some mapping coordinates on it. So what I'm going to do is to come in here and put a UVW map on it. And as soon as you see that, put the UVW map, since I had this turned on where you can see uh, this material on there, then you'll see it on there and you'll see how bad it is. It's all stretched in the wrong scale and everything. So what I want to do is on this UVW map, I want to come down here and I want to do bitmap fit. Bitfap, map, bitmap fit allows me to pick the bitmap and then it'll automatically adjust the gizmo to be the right proportion. So see how it's not uh, all scaled differently now? I mean, the it's not stretched. And now it's just too big, so all I have to do is go in here to the gizmo, and we're just going to go scale, and I can scale it down to the size I think is correct. So I'm going to go for something like maybe oh, about like that seems like that's about right. Now what I want to do is to come down here and I don't want to cut off the brick. So I'm just going to go move and I can slide this gizmo down a little bit and then I can get that brick to align at the bottom. Okay, so now that aligns. Now the other thing I want to do here is you can see how my windows don't quite align. So what I can do is to come in here and put an edit uh, mesh modifier or edit poly, either one. I need it to be below the gizmo, and now I can come in here and I can select these vertices. Now, if I drag it now, you'll be able to see that I'm dragging it underneath the, the mapping coordinate, so I'm just sliding it down, and I can align that out to perfectly match there, and I want it to match up here too, so it's not cutting down the middle of the brick. So there we go. And then the top too, I want to adjust the top. See how we're cutting through a piece of brick there. So let's pull that down so that that all matches up and then that looks nice. Okay. So now there's a nice uh, brick wall. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to, I'm going to render this out and I'm going to take it into uh, Photoshop and we're going to age it. Okay. Now to do that, what I want to do is come in here and put another uh, mapping coordinate on it. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and just copy this one and paste it back on. Now this one, I'm going to make it on mapping channel two. Okay, so what I normally do on this is I'll look at uh, the coordinate itself and you take the uh, longest length. Okay, and we're going to before I do this, I need to click uh, fit so it fits on to my wall. Okay, and you may not be able to see that. Uh, if I turn into a wireframe, and you'll see I copied this. Since I copied it, it didn't snap to the, it copied the same cord as it was. If I put a new one on, it would snap to it. But all I got to do is hit to fit and it'll snap to it. So I take the longest edge, which is this one, and actually I'm going to make it a little bit wider like that so I have a little bit of an edge on here now I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in here the reason I'm going to do this is this mapping coordinate needs to be square okay because it's we're going to take it inside the UV unwrap so there is the square that's inside UV unwrap so I can go to my gizmo here and I can slide this straight up and basically what I'm doing is that's the bottom of my UV unwrap I don't need to do an UV unwrap on this. I'm going to put a UV unwrap on it just so that you can see uh, what I'm talking about. So we're going to go on top of here and we're going to put a UV unwrap on this. Now, if I go into the UV unwrap right now, you won't see it in here. And the reason is, is because this mapping coordinate was on gizmo uh, number two, it was on coordinate number two and UVW by default goes to one. So I'm going to change this to two. Now, when you do this, this little window will pop up. And it says, do you want to move or you want to abandon? Okay, move means we want to copy from one to two, and I don't want to do that. I'm just going to hit abandon, which means that I just want to do, uh, want to use this coordinate that's in there. <clears throat> so now when I open this up, you'll see there it is. There's my mapping coordinate, which is the same as that square I had put on there. So it's that. So I don't really need to do a UV unwrap because I'm just doing a planar map in here. 
Okay, so then the next thing I need to do is to bake this out. Okay, I want to bake this into a bitmap that I can take into uh, Photoshop. So to do that, we're going to go up here to rendering, and we're going to go render to texture, which is zero on your speed keys. And this is where you can render a texture out. Up here at the top is where you want to put your path of where you're going to put this rendering. And I'm going to put it on my drive right here. Now, by default, it'll show in here. Whatever you pick, the name will show up in here. And then we want to go down here to the bottom, and this is where you're telling it what you want to render out. So I'm going to click Add right here, and then I have different options. And I want to render out the diffuse map. Okay, so I'm going to add that in there, diffuse map. Now, by default, it's doing 256 by 256. That's okay when you do a test, but that's way too small. So I'm going to do a 2048 in here, which I think will be fine for this. Now, down here, you just have some check boxes, lighting and shadows. I don't want any lighting and shadows on my stuff. I just want it to be the diffuse map because I don't want to bake any lighting and shadows into it. Sometimes I do, but in this case, I don't. Now, you have to go up here where it says existing channel. Or it'll say use automatic unwrap. Okay, I don't want to automatically unwrap this. I've already un I've already got a mapping coordinate on it, and it can see I've got mapping quarters, but it doesn't know which ones I want to use. And I want to use that number two. Okay, this one we can see that's the coordinate I want to use. So at this point, then I just hit render, <clears throat> and it's going to start rendering this out. Okay. And I'm going to uh, pause this while it's uh, renderings. Okay, now that the rendering's done, uh, we can see it here. But one of the things I want you to notice, and this throws people off, is that uh, this is not just the diffuse. This one that it's showing you here, this display, is actually has lighting in it. So what we want to do is to go over here to our uh, rendering and go to a view image file. And if we go over to where I rendered this and we pull it up, this is the final rendered one. You can see there's no lighting in it. Okay. It's just the diffuse by itself. Okay. So let's go over and open this in Photoshop. Okay. So here it is opened in Photoshop and it's pretty good resolution. Here it is at full scale. Okay. So you see it's plenty of pixels to, you know, hold what we're wanting to hold in this, okay? So, so the next thing that we're going to need to do is I'm going to want to uh, age this and stain it, okay? So it's not just seems like this uh, tileable texture on here. So what I'm going to do is go over, uh, do a search over on Google, and the things I initially start with is do a search for concrete. Now, I'm not going to I'm going to be using this as a stain on the surface. So I really don't want big cracks like this, something like that. I want a kind of a generalized stain, something like this one. Now I always come in here and go to my search tools and make sure I'm only getting large images. And then I have all these to choose from. Okay, this has kind of got a nice stain to it. That's got a nice stain to it. I don't want something with big chunks on it like that that's going to make our object look small, okay? So you have to watch what you choose. So I've gone over here and grabbed some things. I like this. Uh, this nice kind of stain in here. Uh, this has got a nice stain pattern to it. Then I also do the same thing with rust, okay? I'll come in here and do a search for some rust, and I'm looking for you know, not big chunky things like this. I'm looking for more generalized pattern. So something like this. Now this is a little fuzzy. It's not very good resolution, but the way I'm going to be using it, it's fine because it's just going to be a stain. Uh, here's another one. Now these are kind of big chunkies, but I'm going to scale these down and use these just kind of sparingly. Uh, here's another one with some nice kind of uh, very uh, difference in, you know, the way that it's got... Um, the striations and stuff in it and then I also gone over and got a few uh, drips okay and uh, here's another one drippy and so um, a variety of different images that I can use okay so we'll just come in here and uh, let's start with this one so I'm just gonna copy this okay and then I'm just gonna go in here and paste it uh, in Photoshop and you'll see it's uh, kind of big which is fine. So now I need to scale it down. 
Now, the thing about it is, is that um, you can really ruin your textures really quick if you don't get your scale right. And this scale is really way too big for my object, but because of the way I'm going to use it as a stain, you really won't be able to tell. So I've gone ahead and scaled it so that the, the height is correct, and then I need some more on the width, so I'm just going to hold down my uh, Alt and Shift and drag this over. And then what I'm going to do is, I think in this one, I'll just go ahead and flip this horizontally, and then that'll work fine. Let me kind of drift it over the top, kind of like that, and use an um, alpha mask on this. And then I can just come in and paint. And, and I want to turn my opacity down and soften this brush up and just kind of soften this edge here. It, I don't have to worry about it too much because it's just going to be a stain, so I won't see it much in here. And so just get rid of that seam a little bit, and that's fine. And then just flatten those layers. Control E flattens your layers. Now, our blending mode is what's going to blend this together. So I just kind of drift through here and go through my blending modes and see how I want to drop this on. Okay, and sometimes I want it to make it lighter. Sometimes I want to make it darker. There's just different ways. So for this one, I'm going to go for this overlay. See how that's kind of staining the surface? Okay, it's a little too much. I'm going to back it off a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, what you're trying to do is, a, you know, slowly build up the surface uh, texture to it. Now, also one of the things I notice when I do this a lot of time, the saturation starts getting a little high, but I'll just desaturate it later. But see how that's adding that pattern onto there, which is really kind of nice. Okay, so let's go over and get one of the other ones. Uh, let's get um, let's get this one. Okay, put this one on. Okay, I copy that, and I'm going to copy it again. Okay, I'm going to put a, a layer mask on this one and then do the same thing, uh, kind of paint out some of this. Okay, and it's got kind of a repeating uh, pattern that's happening in this, but to a certain degree, I don't care because I'm not only going to be using it for a certain parts, and so you won't notice that. Okay, now that I have this together like that, then what I'm going to do is um, bake in the layer mass on these and then just bake these down so that they're one okay and now i can come in here and do a little bit of uh, rubber stamping and can get some of the repeating nature out of this but i'm going to probably well maybe i don't i'll see i may, I may fade this out Okay, and then same thing. I'm going to go in here to my modes of how I want to add this stain on here. I think I'm going to go for this right here. And then turn that down. And then that's added some nice stains up there at the top. Okay, and um, let's go get some others. Okay, let's go over here to, um, I think, let's get this one. Okay, so let's paste this in. 
And I don't need this bottom part, so I can get rid of that. And then we'll just scale this. Okay, doing the same thing. Paint this out. Okay, I can merge those together. Now we have to really watch this one because the scale is way out on this one. Okay, and so this could really make our wall seem small if we have this too dominant. So I'm going to really pull this way back. So it's just barely putting any pattern in there. Okay. So the thing about doing this kind of process is to make everything very subtle that you're putting on here, not something really drastic. So you're slowly building it up. So we've gone there and then here there we're slowly building it up now at a certain point when I get it what I want I can actually copy this whole thing so select the whole thing copy merged and paste it back on top and so I've kind of baked all of that in and so it's getting a little saturated right now so I'm just gonna go ahead and desaturate this a little bit and you can see a little bit of that orange taken out of there so it seems a little more natural okay so we're getting a nice stained pattern out of this and I can keep building this up as much as I want uh, we can put some drippies in here let's go over here and get some uh, drippies um, yeah let's go for this one and uh, this on top and let's just see what I want to do with this one see actually I think what I want is in to invert this oh I don't know that's pretty nice right there I think what I'm going to do with this is um, let's paint that out. So let's go back to normal. Normal. Let's uh, paint out this mask here. Okay, let's bake those in and then overlay and then what I'm going to do is a layer mask on this now that I've baked these together and uh, fade this out like so. Okay, and then turning it down. And that's added some nice kind of uh, some kind of rain striations on there, which is kind of nice. It's a little too bold on there. There we go. My biggest mistake that students make is they just they slap everything in your face. You know, it's the way I, I kind of liken it is what they're doing is baking and they don't want to put a little salt, you know, for seasoning. They want to open up the top of the salt shaker and pour the whole thing on there. So you want to slowly build it up. OK, so this is pretty nice. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and save this as a TIFF file. Now I save as TIFFs. Um, with my layers intact and that way I don't use Photoshop files I use TIFF files I've had some problems with Photoshop files in the past you know there's different versions of Photoshop files and certain versions of Photoshop don't open other versions of Photoshop files so I save them as a TIFF that saves layers and it saves everything a Photoshop file would uh, but it's uh, universal 
Now I'm going to show you another little trick in here where we can uh, add our own kind of um, drips in here and I want to put some drips underneath these windows in here. Okay, so for this actor, uh, piece, what we have to do is actually rotate the image sideways to do what I'm going to do. And actually, I want to rotate it around the other way, this way. Okay, so there's the bottom. And I'm just going to come on top of this, and uh, I'm going to paint on it with uh, white. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to get white paint in here. And I don't want my brush too big, and let's harden it a little bit. It doesn't have to be too hard. And I want a small brush, and we want this at 100%. And so then I'm just kind of painting in, and this can be re done really quick. You can see I'm not spending much time on this. Okay, something you know like that. And I'm going to do one over here. Okay. Something like that. Okay, and then I'm going to make a layer underneath that, and I'm going to fill this layer with black, and then I'm going to merge these two together. So basically I have white on a black layer. So I'm going to go up here to filter and I'm going to come down to um, stylize and go to wind. And let me pull over where you can see this. There we go. And I want to wind from left to right and I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to wind it again. And I'm going to wind it again. Okay, and I'm going to get these kind of little kind of streaks in here. Okay, and that works fine for what I need. And so now I'm going to come around and rotate it back. Okay, rotate it back up. So that's clockwise. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this and I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it on a new channel. So new channel and paste paste it in a new channel okay now I want to get something to actually uh, put in that so what we're going to do is to come into our rust let's go back over to we'll go with this one so I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste on here. And scale it down. Okay, and same thing, copy this over. And I don't think I need to uh, paint this one out, so I'm just going to merge these together. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, copy this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just hold down my control key and then click on this icon right here, and I'm going to copy this. Okay, so. Uh, now what I'm going to do is to make a transparent layer, and here's the trick, you got to make a transparent layer, no, nothing on it. Now I'm going to go to channels. Now if I hold down my control key and I click on this icon, it's going to do a soft selection of those areas, a perfect soft selection. And now I'm going to go edit, uh, paste special, paste in two, and it's going to paste this piece that I did into those areas, okay? And I can actually, since these aren't locked together, I can come in here and I can grab this piece and I can slide this around to get whatever I want into those areas, okay? And let's say maybe something like that. And then I can lock these together, okay? And so now I want to go in here with my transformation modes until I get something that I want. Okay, and I'm going to move this up just to here. Something like 
that and let's turn it down a little bit so we got a little bit of stain happening underneath that and at this point uh, I'm gonna let this go so last thing I'm gonna do select the whole thing edit copy merge uh, paste it back on top and then the last thing just double check this a little bit closer make it to uh, probably probably a little saturated so I'm just gonna see desaturate it just a hair Maybe about like that and now that texture is pretty much the way I want it okay so it's pretty nice texture so now I'm gonna save this out okay now I use my textures as targa files okay here's the original I don't want to overwrite that one so I'm just gonna call this one aged I uh, don't need 20 32 which need 24 okay so now we can go back over here to uh, max and so we're gonna come into our material editor here and I'm just going to um, unplug this one and then as a matter of fact I'll just hold on my shift and copy that node and then we're just going to replace this <clears throat> with that map okay and do a show that on here show on our arch and design okay now initially you're gonna have this kind of an issue and what's going on is by default this is using channel one and we wanting it to use channel two so we need to make sure that we choose channel two and then it'll line back up and now there it is I've got a nice aged uh, wall okay uh, based on my original piece and so the thing that we're that I'm showing you here is how to use a titleable texture to initially get the pattern that you want on there and this is a um, uh, a concrete I mean not concrete but a brick wall but this could have been wallpaper whatever and then by initially getting the pattern on there and then baking it out rendering it to a texture baking it out and then taking it into Photoshop I can get uh, a nice weathered look to it and then bring it back in now a couple other things that I do sometimes which I would encourage some of you that are uh, doing this is to come back on top of this and what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna slide it back a little bit let's get the top turn the grid on and I'm just gonna slide this back just a little bit because I want it to be behind our construction plane because I'm gonna draw on this and what since this is flat now yes it's got a bump on it but what I want to do is now come in with some splines and can probably just use rectangles on this and what I can do is come in here and say okay I'm gonna have some of these bricks actually come out on this and so I'm just gonna draw a rectangle and I'm gonna pick certain bricks and say okay I'm gonna have these actually three-dimensional coming out off of the surface now when you do this you don't want to you know do it um, in some kind of a mechanical way you want it to seem like clusters and so there are certain areas of the bricks that are coming out other areas of the bricks that are not coming out and so and it's probably an advantage if I change these to a light color right now while I'm doing this so it's easier to see them and so I'll go across the whole surface and I'm picking out certain um, areas let's shapes pick these make all of them light so it's easy for us to see them and so I'm picking some particular ones okay and I would do this across the whole surface okay so now I'm gonna pick one of these okay and we can convert it to an edible spline and then I'm gonna attach the others to it I was gonna go attach by multiple the list and then it'll list all these splines that I just made and attach them all together okay once I have them attached together then I can just convert that to an editable poly and they'll be solid objects okay now uh, the thing I want to do now is to give them a little bit of uh, depth so we can put a shell modifier on these and I don't need that much depth 
and just a little bit like so. Okay, I'm going to convert that to an editable poly. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pick these front surfaces. And then I'm going to put a bevel on those. Now you'll just want to zero both of these bevels out. Okay, so this is how much bevel, just a little bit, and then just out just a little bit so that it'll catch a highlight on that surface. Okay, now I just need to slide these back in up to the wall. So it's just right up next to the wall like so. And now what I want to do is to come in here and grab this mapping coordinate and paste it on this. Okay. Now it'll offset it. So in other words, see how it offset that? So what I want to do is go down here and hit this acquire button and then click back on the wall and I tell it I want an absolute. So in other words, it's going to absolutely copy that coordinate and put it on here so that these coordinates line up with each other. Now when I go back and I put this material on it, okay, then they will disappear, okay, but when you light this and render it, then you'll be able to see that those bricks, you'll get a little bit of stretching on there, but really when you light it, you really won't see that, so I don't have to worry about unwrapping those, and that'll add a little bit of depth to your wall where you'll get some little bit of shadowing in there so it won't seem so flat. Okay, so that's um, texturing a wall 101, and uh, that's how I do it. So thank you very much.